Today I'm going to talk to you about cardiac valve regurgitation. Cardiac valve regurgitation essentially describes abnormal blood flow through the heart as a result of improper closing of the cardiac valves. Before we get into the abnormalities, let's discuss how blood flow normally goes through the heart. Blood will enter the heart through the vena cavae coming from your upper extremities and your lower extremities. Once in the heart, it moves from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Then it leaves the heart through the pulmonary artery. It's called the pulmonary artery because the blood is going towards your lungs. Once in the lungs, the blood will be oxygenated and then return to your heart through the pulmonary veins. From the pulmonary vein, the blood goes into the left atrium and then down to the left ventricle and then exits the heart through the aorta and from the aorta goes to your body to nourish and oxygenate it. So what ensures that blood continues to flow in this direction in your heart? Well there are four valves in your heart that allow this to happen. They open and close and thus allow the blood to enter and exit the different chambers of the heart. I've already drawn two of those valves here but what we're going to focus on today is the mitral valve which separates the left atrium and the left ventricle here in blue, and the aortic valve, which separates the left ventricle from the aorta here in green. The two conditions we are going to discuss today are mitral valve regurgitation and aortic valve regurgitation. In order to help you remember what is meant by regurgitation, let's go back to your elementary school days. I'm sure you remember hearing about how baby birds feed their young, what happens is that because the baby birds are too small to leave the nest, the mother bird must go out and find food for them, perhaps a worm, and when she returns to her babies, she chews up the food for them and regurgitates it. She spits it into their mouths. So regurgitation essentially means to rush back. So what's rushing back in cardiac valve regurgitation? Well, it's not a chewed up worm. In mitral valve regurgitation, Instead of all of the blood flowing from the left atrium to the left ventricle, some of the blood flows backwards into the left atrium again because the mitral valve did not close properly. In aortic valve regurgitation, there's a similar process. Instead of all of the blood flowing from the left ventricle to the aorta, some of the blood flows backwards again into the left ventricle. Leonardo da Vinci created excellent drawings of the cardiac valve back in his day by studying the ox heart. Now I'm no da Vinci, but I can tell you what these valves look like. The mitral valve has two leaflets and more or less looks like this, and it looks like this flat line when it's closed properly. The aortic valve looks like a peace sign, and these peace signs open up and allow blood to flow through. So what causes mitral valve regurgitation and aortic valve regurgitation? Although these are two different conditions, they do share some etiologies. Both mitral valve regurgitation and aortic valve regurgitation can be caused by congenital defects, meaning problems with the valve that you were born with. In aortic valve regurgitation, a very common defect is that you have two leaflets in your aortic valve instead of three. These conditions can also be caused by scarring on the valve as a result of healing after endocarditis, which is an infection of the heart, or after rheumatic fever. Interestingly, before we had stethoscopes, doctors thought that rheumatic fever was the only cause of mitral valve regurgitation, but since then we've learned that is not the case. Mitral valve regurgitation in particular can be caused by heart disease or by a heart attack, both of which can damage the tendons and muscles that allow the mitral valve to open and close properly. Aortic valve regurgitation can be the result of a diseased aortic root. The aortic root is essentially the wall of the aorta and the components that allow the aortic valve to open and close. In particular, a connective tissue disorder called Marfan syndrome damages this aortic root and can cause that valve to close improperly. So how does a clinician know that a patient has mitral valve regurgitation or aortic valve regurgitation? Unfortunately, there are not very many symptoms that are absolutely specific to mitral valve regurgitation or aortic valve regurgitation. However, in both cases, the patient may present with difficulty breathing with exertion, 
So this means that when maybe the patient said, oh, I walked across the room and I felt so out of breath afterwards, not I ran a marathon and then I was out of breath. This is an unusual difficulty breathing. Similarly, the patient may complain of fatigue, which is on a daily basis, not just a result of staying up too late last night. A patient who may have aortic valve regurgitation may present with the Musée sign, which is nodding their head every single time that the heart beats. This is the result of that abnormal blood flow through the aortic valve. So what will you notice on the physical exam? In both cases, you will likely hear a heart murmur. A heart murmur is the result of sound wave vibrations from that valve closing and moving through the blood that is flowing backwards. In mitral valve regurgitation, this murmur may be a click. In aortic valve regurgitation, you will hear a more high-pitched noise. In addition, in aortic valve regurgitation, you may see hill sign. Hill sign is when the blood pressure of the lower extremities is higher than that of the upper extremities. In order to make a definitive diagnosis, more testing is warranted. A clinician may order an electrocardiogram. An electrocardiogram, also known as an EKG, measures the electrical signal of the heart. However, this is not very specific for mitral or aortic valve regurgitation. However, you may see a sign for left ventricular hypertrophy on the EKG. This means that there is thickening of the muscle of the left ventricle, as you can see here. This is because the left ventricle has to work harder to push that blood out in the proper direction. A better test would be the echocardiogram. The echocardiogram allows you to non-invasively image the heart through the use of sound waves. And in doing so, you can observe the opening and closing of the mitral and aortic valves, as well as determine the direction of blood flow. All in all, once these tests are performed, a definitive diagnosis can be made and treatment can begin.